you're 15 years old, and you want to be the best. Not just the best you can be, but the best in the world. I can take young, young talent and transform their talents. I can make them perform on national team, European championships, world championships, and take them into the Olympics. So, if you want to be the best of the best, you call me. Well, it's not the young athletes that call me, it's their parents. So, would you like to know what I can say to a 15-year-old 15, 15 that will make him or her into an elite athlete? Well, first you have to know what I say to the parents. So I got a call from a mom to a 14-year-old swimmer. He was very talented. They're always very, very talented. Like the best in his league. But in competition, he gets angry. And every time he faces the pressure, he goes into pieces. And this mother felt so bad for her son. He trained so hard. I want him to perform so that he can feel successful. Can you help him? So this is a mother who clearly understands the process of performance. Can you help my son perform? That's what the mother said. But what parents do is often very different. Standing on the sideline numerous times, I've been listening to comments and questions asked from one parent to another and often in front of their children. Did she win? How many goals did he score? Isn't she in the position for the national team? Shouldn't he be able to win the next game? So the parent act as if the results are everything. Getting to that top of the podium getting the best grades, coming in as number one. All the questions I hear are centered on the result. Not who you are, not your experience, not what you've been working on, not how you felt, not your thoughts or your plan, no. All the questions are centered on what you have achieved or what you want to achieve. So from a very young age, this becomes our fixed mindset. The results are what matters. This doesn't work. We have to change this. We, ha we have to flip it upside down for these young people. We have to make them understand that this focus on results will ruin them. And then they'll never reach that podium anyway. And this is terrible for me to say, because the reason for parents, coaches, athletes to hire me is to get results. So when I say, I don't want to focus on results, I don't even want to talk about results. For a moment, the parents will play nice. They'll say, yeah, of course, it's all about the process. Don't talk about the results. But the minute I leave the room, hang up the phone, they're back asking the question. So just how many goals did you score? So they say they want one thing, but they do another. So I talked to the parents of um, a tennis girl, 12 years old, tennis family, and these parents were so frustrated. She's not motivated anymore, and she's not having any fun when, when she's training. So I ask, well, if she's not motivated and she's not having any fun, why play tennis? And the parents were like, well, when you have committed yourself and you have trained so hard and the Danish championship is within a month, don't you owe it to the trainer and the club to compete? So, the parents are teaching the daughter two different lessons here. The first lesson is that you have to finish what you have started. 
and this is a perfectly fine thing to learn. But the second lesson they're teaching their daughter is that you have to compromise what feels right for you in order to meet the expectations of other people. When we focus too much on the result, it is totally counterproductive. There are so many things that are out of an athlete's control. You don't know what your competitor will do. You don't know if the judge will be fair. You don't know if the weather or an injury will slow you down. Chance, coincidence, luck plays a much bigger part that you would ever like to admit. So when we focus too much on the result, the pressure is immense. We see the consequences of this result-oriented approach everywhere. According to the WHO, by 2030, depression will be the biggest global disease. Mental illness makes up to 25% of Denmark's burden of disease. And there is an increase in the number of children that do not thrive physically or psychologically in school. They cannot keep up. What I see in my work is that more and more young people, even children, are showing symptoms of anxiety, depression, and stress. Everywhere they go, they're trying to perform. Because that's what they think they have to, to be good enough, to be accepted, and to be someone. So here is the big secret. You have to become someone before you can become something. You have to become someone before you can become something. Often when we talk about becoming someone, we actually mean having some kind of status by being not someone, but something. Like the young badminton player wanting to be the best badminton player in Denmark, or a young athlete wanting to become a part of the youth national team. So this thing you have to become or achieve becomes far more important than who you become. And this is not the right way to find balance. When you realize who you want to be, everything gets so much easier. Because this will be your compass to guide you. It will guide you and show you how to make decisions, all kinds of decisions, but especially those decisions made under the pressure in the moment of brilliance. So how do we find out who we want to be? We try to find this in our work with mental training. I am 100% focused on helping young athletes find out who they are and who they want to be. Together with the, with the athlete, we set up a group of individual values, and we make sure that every value is very well defined so that the athlete know exactly what every value means to that athlete. From there, we analyze every challenging situation from the perspective of those values. Then the value will give the answer to the athlete of what is the right and meaningful way for them to act in different kind of situations. When I first met Mikkel, he was in school. Now, he is a full-time international badminton player. At first, Miguel was struggling with keeping a high level of performance. Every time he faced the pressure, he felt like quitting. So he wanted to be able to continue even when he felt like quitting. So we uncovered Miguel's values, and we found out that he needed to work on a strong willpower, determination, and focus on development. So based on those values, we made a game plan. 
So with time, Mikkel became conscious enough to be able, during pressure, to choose should he A, act on his feeling and quit, or should he B, stay in the match, follow his game plan, and continue. So because Mikkel's values were now aligned, he was capable of choosing B. Now he had a higher goal than just winning the match. Now he was also working on what kind of badminton player, what kind of person he would like to be. So by focusing not on the results, but on his values, it worked. Another athlete I've been working with for years is Caroline. Caroline is a world-class para-athlete. She went to her first Paralympics in 2008, again in 2012. I followed her in 2016 in, in Rio, and now we're working on going to Tokyo in 2020. Caroline is on a question, specialized in dressage. When I first met her, she was really frustrated about not getting enough out of her training with her trainer. She felt like she spent so much time listening to the feedback of a trainer in her headset that she somehow lost the connection with herself and the horse. So we found out that what Caroline needed to work on was that being more self-dependent and taking responsibility. So with time, Caroline started to ask her trainer to communicate differently with her. Now she was very focused on always listening to the feedback her own feedback before listening to the feedback of her trainer. She also started to structure her own training. And she started to always evaluating herself first before letting the opinions of other people in. Today, Caroline trusts herself. And that is a very big step in order to accomplish anything. To be able to trust yourself and listen to yourself firsthand. Working with elite athletes, I use a three-step process. Something you can use too. Step number one, what are the basic values you want to live by? Step number two, how does these values look like in action? And step number three, consistently live and act by these values, even when things get tough, especially when things get tough. And I know it's, it's really easy for me just to stand here and say it like that. In reality, this means years of training, hard work, and mental toughness. So the reality is hard, the idea is easy. Parents can so easily undermine the work we do with the young athletes. Not because that's what they want to, but because that's what happens when maybe they're not conscious enough or maybe they don't know any better. So parents' choice of words and timing has such a big impact. That's my problem too. Not only am I an elite coach, I'm also a parent. So. Last summer, I was bicycling with my oldest daughter. She had just learned how to ride her bike, and we were practicing on using the brakes. Every time she used the brakes correctly, I cheered. I was so proud of her. But then it hit me. Why was I only cheering when she did it correctly? Why was I not cheering every time she tried, but failed and tried again? This is scary. This was what happened to me when I was not conscious enough. It is so hard to break through from a fixed mindset. And that's why I'm here today. To remind you that my job, all of our jobs, is to help young people understand what's really important. 
So if you want to inspire a young person in your life, please help them figure out who they want to be so that they can make right and conscious decisions on what's meaningful to them. Before we can truly be something, we all have to become someone.